So here's here's where the money part of it starts, where the money trail starts. It's a $73 million smart meter installation contract to Corex. Now Corex is a US company. Ties to the BC Liberals. And is directly connected to the BC hydro directors and insiders. And in Idaho, it's $190 per house for a wired meter, and we're paying $500 a house. A little bit off there. Now, a wonderful article that you might want to read is in the Watershed Sentinel. It, the lady's name was uh, Joyce Nelson. She was just here in, uh, in November with uh, uh, Michael Saver and Maple Rich. The, uh, she's a, in LA. Yeah. And uh, she wrote an article that is amazing amount of research and brilliantly written. And it's, you know, basically it is the purpose of smart meter program is to sell smart meters. And here is your, the smart meter profiteers. This is the BC Hydro Board of Directors and we just isolated the names of the people who are involved with Corex. And there they are. So Corex is owned by CAI, which I can't even find out what that is. And they own Corex. And, uh, uh, Tracy McVicker, David Emerson, Peter Bentley, and Peter Resper, they are investors and on the board of directors of Corex, but they're also sitting on the board of directors of BC Hydro. So do you think they might have had any influence who got the contract? Maybe. I'm just, I'm just saying. And if you go back one slide, and you see the person on the far left, that's David Cobb. David Cobb has just left BC Hydro. And the, what we're understanding is that the morale in BC Hydro is at shoe top level. It's very low. There's a lot of fiscal irresponsibility. We, this is what we're hearing. They're not so very transparent with their documents, so we can't find out what's being spent. But I have been personally in front of BC Hydro with placards and the microphone yelling and cheering and all that sort of thing. And we've had people walk by us on their lunch break at BC Hydro, cover their badges and say, follow the money trail and then they scurry into the building because the security is all over the place. And other people have had other similar stories to that. And, but what I find really interesting, Rafe Mayer is, Rafe Mayer is the one that brought it up. David Cobb just left BC Hydro as the head, the CEO of BC Hydro. He's gone to work for Jimmy Pattison. Mm -hmm. Who's got the money to buy BC Hydro should it go belly up? Oh, yeah. Ha! <laughs> yes. It's, it's almost the same as the IPP industry. If you look at uh, all the insiders, there's like page, a couple pages at least, and that was old, an old list of all the insiders that worked for BC Liberals and the Hydro Company who got all these IPP contract deals, or which were levels about three times higher than what you would normally have to pay for, for, to produce that high, uh, power. So at set prices, and it's similar to this, they're setting their own prices almost, and who knows. So here's, here's a funny little slide that we created on, uh, with my IT guy. Just kind of knocked the old BC Hydro logo apart there a little bit, and you know, could it be Corex Hydro coming up? You know, it's really interesting what you say about that CSA and the UL approval and all that. I, I was involved in manufacturing heaters for food dehydrators. I had a food dehydrator business. And they wouldn't let me do a thing unless I had CSA and UL approval. All my components were UL approved, but I needed CSA approval. And when I found out, wait a second, CSA is, a, is supposedly a non-for-profit organization. But when I found out who I was dealing with, like who was my competitor, how come I couldn't get my, my dehydrator heater passed? Well, there were, no, there were no standards set for dehydrators. So when I looked on the board, actually it was a, somebody at, at uh, uh, UBC that told me about it. They said, you're never going to get your heater passed. And I said, why? He said, well, here's who's on the board. And it was General Electric. <laughs> and it was Sunbeam. <coughs> and what they wanted me to do is they wanted my heater to comply to a deep fat fryer, which is what, four or 500 degrees and will burn your skin off and my heater went all to a maximum of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So I had to withdraw after many thousands of dollars. But if you try to bring in, bring in appliances from the United States, and if they don't have a UL or a CSA approval, you could, you could be in, in deep doo-doo with your insurance company. You know, if you, had a, if you had a fire that was attributable 
or linked at all. It could be a loose plug. It could be anything. But if it doesn't have a CSA or UO number on it, you could be in trouble. So the federal NDP has now uh, set up a, a electro hypersensitivity registry. So if people feel that they're becoming ill as a result of uh, these meters, then you can call or email Charmaine Borg and, uh, and register with them. This is uh, from the, the uh, Union of BC Municipalities that was back in September. This is Rich Coleman's statement. He's the Minister of Energy. If you don't like it, move off the grid. And then Christy Clark just went around and supported him and said, well, you can always leave the province. Except there's only one thing along with that. The whole thing is going to be connected. All the provinces will eventually do that. And uh, with all this bad news that I'm giving you, I also want to share with you that there are things you can do, especially if you're in a house that you're renting and you've got a meter in the wall and you are out of your mind with, with work. There are, uh, there are fabrics you can buy that actually will shield the radio frequency. This is one that, uh, very similar one that I, this is a coat that I wear and this coat is lined with a material that stops the radiation from coming through. And I can turn the collar up like that. It's silver, right? Pardon me? It's silver. Silver fabric. Yeah. yeah it has silver and copper wires woven through it, and then it's wrapped with the material polyester. But how do you ground that? You don't have to ground it. You don't? Not for radio frequency. Okay. If you go on to my uh, website, healthyhomesenvironmental.com, there's a resource section, and it links you to a company that sells all the fabric. And this is a fabric I'm doing a, a big uh, project right now in Vancouver, and this is drapery material. This is drapes off of, out of my bedroom, and they simply have a dowel pocket in the top. The dowel fits through here, slides through there, and it's, uh, this is one meter, and a meter is 98 and a half inches long, so it's made specifically for drapes. It comes from uh, Switzerland, and it's called Swiss Shield uh, Drapery Fabric. This can't touch your skin, whereas this, these other materials here can touch your skin. And this blocks 99% of radiation. And it's not cheap either, is it? No, this is very expensive. This is a, about $125 a yard. And I'm sure as more and more people purchase it, the price is going to come down. What but it's, it? it's actually every other thread. This is called Daylight, this particular one. There's one called Natu Natural, which is inside my hat. This one is, uh, uh, this one is, every thread is uh, silver and copper wiring, and it's wrapped with cotton, so this is a, a this one is natural, and that's a, a natural fabric, and this one's polyester, and this one is every, every second thread is the copper and silver. And you can also get, I've also used this quite a bit. This is a microwave absorbency material. So it's, it's laminated because it feels awful when you touch it. It's just yucky stuff. But it actually absorbs the frequency. So in places where we've done condos where people have got a, multiple meters on the other side of the wall, like 16, 20 meters, and what we do is we take, in the last one we did, we took the kitchen completely apart. We uh, painted the wall twice, and the wall gets grounded, which you were mentioning before. This is, what the, this is what the paint looks like. It's kind of yucky right now because it's, it's carbon graphite based paint and it has a ground strap built into it. You can see the ground strap right here. And where the ground strap, I, I located next to a wall plug and, and I put a plate on it and then I lead a ground wire from the plate into the ground of the building. And this takes all the electrical field away and drains away the radio frequency. Can I just ask one quick question? Yes. Um, you know it's bad when you have a meter, a smart meter on your, your house because you get the dirty energy going into your house. What if, should I be worried about, say, how the house next to me that has yes. a smart meter and like what would that be transmitting right now without being connected to the grid? Well that's that's actually a really good question. I, I'll get to a little bit okay. later, but might as well answer now. Is that uh, when you go into the houses that I did uh, uh, yesterday they were concerned with that very thing. They, you know, the houses, some of the ones in the track houses, they're only like 90 to 10 feet apart. These are designed to go uh, 300 feet, the meters. So they will go right through your house. So if you had, a, you had a meter on this side of your house, 
and your neighbor had a meter over here, this is going to go through your house to get to his meter. And then when you combine that with all the 2.4 gigahertz stuff communicating to smart appliances, cell phones and everything in the house, cordless phones, I just automatically tell people, get rid of your cordless phones, they've got lots of really great corded phones with speakers and um, speaker phone and, and also uh, answering machines and all that, just tell them to get rid of all that stuff. Because this is going to be an amazing, amazing problem. You look at places like cul-de-sacs, where, where you've got you know, 15 houses in a cul-de-sac, all with smart meters talking to one another, and then one meter in the daisy chain on the street will have a collector antenna inside of it. And BC Hydra said, you will not know which meter has it. So it's kind of like uh, Russian roulette with smart meters. So whereas most smart meters have got a 900 megahertz transmitter receiver and a 2.4, this one, collector meter, will have another antenna in it, which will then send the message from all of the neighborhood, it will go through all the different meters, get to that collector, and that collector will be will go to a collector hub, which will be a cell phone tower designated for BC Hydro. And what, what frequency? They haven't said yet. And there might be a deal with, with one of the current carriers, but what uh, they're very sneaky. And that is that Cell phone companies do not need to get a permit. They do not need to tell you that a cell tower is coming if it's under 50 feet, which is a telephone pole. If you go over 50, you've got to, you've got to uh, apply for a permit, and then you have a town meeting, and, and people may or may not uh, say something. However, even if you have a, uh, if they put a cell tower out in the middle of this field, and it's uh, 50 meters, that's 100, let's say 150 feet, they only have to tell the people that live within the radius of the tower. So if the tower fell over and it's 150 feet, so it would be 150 foot radius. So they could tell you four, you four people in your houses, but because you live 300 yards away, they don't have to tell you. You, get no, you don't have to get a notice. They've got a lot of clever ways of getting around this with the CRTC and the FCC in the United States. And they don't have to tell you if they put on car line either. What's that? If they put them on car line, they don't have to tell you either. That's right. Yeah. And there are, we've, we've been to meetings where, where neighbors, who, they've been neighbors for like 25 years and they fight like cats and dogs because you're getting a cell tower and you're getting 50000 a year for the cell tower and you're next door and you're broke. <laughs> And all of a sudden, you're driving a Benz. The house I'm doing on uh, Monday in Vancouver, they, they've got a two-year-old child, and they want me to build a canopy around their bed. So we, we bought a bunch of the fabric, and it's going to be uh, thread through a hoop, and it'll be over top of the crib, and it just, it'll just completely surround the, uh, the crib. And people build canopies out, out of this material, and they cover queen-size beds, king beds, single beds and whole rooms, they do all kinds of things with it. And we also do uh, filtration if people have got a lot of dirty electricity and we try to find out the source. If we can't find the source, then we can filter it. So in terms of precautionary measures, hard wiring of all wireless devices, uh, it's, it's absolutely amazing how many people have been deceived by Telus and Shaw when they order either Optic TV or Shaw's equivalent to Optic TV. And if you have a brownout or a blackout, the, even if you get it hardwired, it's got cables hanging out of it and it's going into your computer, that if you get a brownout, it defaults to wireless. It's just the automatic signal. And you, you have to have a meter. And often, too often actually, people get sick. Then they realize that something's happened uh, after that blackout that I'm sick. And often it's people having allergic reactions to medications they're taking on a regular basis. So hardwiring of schools. You know, you're getting schools saying, well, we can't hardwire the schools. That's BS. The wiring's in the schools already. Especially if they've got T-bar, you know, the acoustic tiles in the ceiling. If they've got that, the wiring's all up there. Just raise a tile, look up there, you see blue cable. That's Cat5 or Cat, no, it's Cat5 cable. That's uh, for schools. Because not that many... Uh, schools that are that are new that are getting the Wi-Fi. I mean, it's they don't they just skip the wiring in the new school. But with the older schools, 
you're gonna you're gonna have the wiring in the walls. And you know, I think we all need to stand up and say to say to these school boards, okay, if this if you think this is safe, and you're being told by Macintosh or Apple that it's safe, or by Cisco or Belkin, who's ever supplying the wireless routers, then would you sign this paper that says that, that it, you know that it's safe? So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna sue your butt if something happens. And we have a lot of people, that young girl that I showed you there with, with my friend Lisa, she was so weak, uh, Maple Ridge, uh, they had Macintosh routers in, all, in uh, I think six of the classrooms in the school. She was so weak and dizzy, she had to have her little classmates help her to go from classroom to classroom. Because she couldn't, and it was only in the presence of the Macintosh rubbers. And now they live in Windwall. So. How about the Bluetooth? The Bluetooth is a nasty piece of technology. That, that is, that's a different frequency than the cell phone. And I could probably uh, pick up a blue tube, Bluetooth, uh, if you had it over there and you had your iPhone on the stage and I was in the middle with a meter, I would be able to pick it up easy. Because it's 2.4 gigahertz Bluetooth and the cell phones are 1800. So the Bluetooth is a very, very nasty piece of hardware. I would never recommend anybody put one near them. I can see you probably have one. Okay. Yeah. So here's what you're looking at in schools. All these children are being irradiated so sitting there with a bank of computers and they're being blasted. And then here's the parents who don't, they don't want their kids to be using Wi-Fi, and then this is the workplace. So every one of those is a, is a wireless device, and the ones in the seat up on the top there, those are uh, the routers, and then they've got wireless transmitters, they've got cordless phones, they've got cell phones. I mean, you ever, have you seen how many people have two cell phones? <laughs> one for business and the other one's for family? It's, it's amazing. The ones that drive me crazy are the young girls who stick them in their bra. Oh. I see it all. The, I see it all the time in the summer, of course. But it's just—I mean—you got a powerful, powerful technology that's close to your heart. And isn't it interesting that not that this is all that related to it, but isn't it interesting that the the predominant breast cancer is on the left side? Where the, where the heart is, and it's also where the major lymphatic system is on the, on, underneath the armpit. So here's some of the solutions for, I call it, good health. Um, if you can avoid wireless radiation or electrical uh, or dirty electricity fields, by all means do it. Spend more time out in nature. That, that second one there, it sounds kind of funny, it's forest bathing, but it's actually a technique that was developed in Japan. It's not much to it. You just forget your cell phone, go walk around in the bush for an hour. And there are very powerful, um, what are called phenolic compounds that are that are emitted by trees. It's the scent of trees. It's the it's the taste of trees. It's the the vibration that's given off by the trees. In Japan, they call it shuku. And same thing with beach walking. Walking in the beach, a lot of negative ions. It's very very therapeutic. And if you're in your bare feet, it's also you're connecting to uh, ground. And it's a great way to drain away a lot of stress, but also a great way to drain away electromagnetic fields. One of my favorite baths, probably some of you have done it here, is Epsom salt and baking soda. Uh, people are now starting to drink baking soda because it converts your body to alkaline, makes it more alkaline. And diet and nutrition, daily supplementation. Um, and if you don't have the problem out here with trees, but it breaks my heart to see people cutting down trees, especially evergreens, when they found that evergreen trees are the ones that absorb the radiation more than anything else, because they have more moisture, they have sap, and the needles will actually disperse it. I can, I can take this meter, or, or this one here, this is an audio one, and I can hold this on a, I can hold this like this and pick up the cell antenna over here. And if I'm standing in front of an evergreen tree and I'll go like this, I won't get a signal. Trees are amazing. And the play, neighborhoods where I've uh, tested where they have big cedar hedges, you know, like 20 feet of hedges, and there's smart meters all over the place. On this side of the hedge, no signal. Step out in the street, screaming. Hmm. And then, of course, uh, the sleep sanctuary is what I referred to with, with the canopy. But also, for those of you who sleep where your bedroom's lit, any kind of light whatsoever, they've done studies that, that show 
The darker the room, the more melatonin is produced by your body. The better your sleep, the circadian rhythm is better. You're going to have deeper sleep, more, more restorative sleep. And then, um, if how many people here go to a naturopathic physician? Great. Lean on these people <laughs> to get with the program. This is going to be an epidemic. It already is in a lot of people. But when you look at the symptoms with electrohypersensitivity, it's the same as fibromyalgia. It's the same as chronic fatigue. And those, those are terms that were coined by the medical professionals because they couldn't figure out what was wrong with people. So they came up with this chronic fatigue. So people are always tired. Well, guess what? If you're sleeping with a cell phone under your pillow, or an alarm clock, or a cell, or a cordless phone. You're not getting to sleep. You wake up more tired than you went to sleep. But a lot of the naturopathic clinics that I've been in, I've been in about half a dozen now. Some of them I sneak in, just you know, make an inquiry, but I'll have a meter on. And uh, most of them are worse than the worst houses I've been in. And it's because they have they have a wireless uh, infrastructure set up at the front. And they might have laptops around the clinic if they've got multiple offices. They have satellite radios, cordless phones. Then they allow their patients to come in and talk on a cell phone. Well, if you remember those other slides about blood-brain barrier leakage, you know, stress proteins, all these things that agitates all your cells, does it make sense to go to an atropathic clinic for chelation therapy or therapy when they're allowing you to talk on a cell phone? They've got a cell phone. There are people that sit in chelation beds detoxing mercury, which is the most conductive plant and metal on the planet, and they're letting them talk on a talk on a cell phone, work on a laptop. Everything's wireless. I mean, it just it blows my mind. I just can't believe they do it. And for some reason, I don't know if it's they don't want to. And I know some wonderful naturopathic physicians. I worked with a lot of them, and, and they are really great and they're committed to their patients. But this. This is another big piece that they've got to learn about, and they better learn about it quick because it's coming. It's like a freight train. And all of the colleagues that I have around North America that I speak with, who've got a lot more experience than I have, they're all wondering what's going to happen when these meters are all installed, and I, I share with them what's going on here. Uh, when the meters are all installed, they start to transmit, they have them all wired into a, it's called a grid, it's called a smart grid. What's going to happen when you have all these frequencies combined with everything else going on? Nobody knows. It's, it really is an interesting thing to uh, ponder. So, if you have a smart meter, does anybody have a smart meter? Right. Oh, you have it. They just wanted oh. in on Thursday and, right. um, when I was at work and I came home and, and I didn't want it. Yeah. Okay, so here's some things you can do that are on the screen that you can do. You know, first of all, phone BC Hydro, I did not get my consent. I don't want it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, demand to be removed. And don't expect to be treated uh, by a sweet young person on the other end of the line. They're, they, they become very belligerent. They're, they're bullying people. They're saying there's nothing wrong with the technology. And in some cases, they get, they get really not. They'll hang up on you. It'll probably be hard because... Um, uh, it was approved by my band. Like all the houses now have which band? Oh. Well, there are oh, there yeah. are some there are some native bands that are actually contesting it, up in the Nicola mm -hmm. and also in, uh, in Capilano. Now, how would I know if it's digital or smart meter? Funny, you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Digital started about ten years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but at least that's what BC Hydro says. I think it was more like four or five years ago. But a digital meter still has a switching mode power supply in it to convert the power, the energy, to, to a direct current so it can transmit the digital signals. They still create dirty power, but they don't have the RF, a radio frequency component. So the one on this side is an analog meter, so just like this one. And the, uh, the one in the middle is a digital meter, and the one on the other side is a smart meter. I was told once that if I wanted to go off the grid, that the analog meter wouldn't work for going off the grid. If I wanted to be sub, uh, partially off the grid and have a backup of hydro, the analog wouldn't work. Uh, I think it's not I. True. No? Yeah? Uh, there have actually been lots of people who have had, particularly with the solar or with little. Uh, independent power producers where they have a little little dam or a little turbine in the stream and they generate power. There's actually been lots of reports where people 
had the meters go backwards. Yeah, there's lots of information. The research in, into this started back in the 1900s, <clears throat> early 1900s. There's actually people that have been tracking the disease rates. Dr. Sam Milhelm has written a book about it called Dirty Electricity. And he's tracked it from the early 1900s and he's watched the disease rates increase wherever they had high tension power lines, where they had more and more electrical appliances used. And the people that still have the lowest disease rates are the Mennonites. And you know, the people that live without, elect without electricity, they don't have anywhere near the same, same disease rates. But I really want to make sure that you know that you have some rights to, you can call, you can complain, you can talk to your member of parliament, you can talk to your, your council, your mayors, whatever it is that you can talk to. People have got to, we've all got to band together and we've got to talk about what's going on here. And hold their feet to the fire when you, the, the third line up from the bottom there says seven days as Cindy said on CTV. She actually said when she was confronted many, many times, to, can people opt out? And she said, well, if they send a letter seven days before the installation, the trick is you have to know when it's going to be installed. And then you'll wind up on a delay list, which means you'll get the meter sometime between now and December of this year. But I believe we're going to stop it before then. So we, we actually need help in a number of ways. We need people to talk to all the different levels of government. We need, we need money for the legal, for the human rights application. It's now going to appeal. There's already been $50,000 spent that we've raised in doing talks like this. And um, it's, it's just, we need to keep pounding the issue with them. You know, where, where they're having the best results is where they've spoken out the loudest. Yes. And in some cases, they've taken off the smart meters and replaced them with analog meters that they got. And then they take the smart meters back to the hydro company and say, here, we don't want this, it's yours. And then they say they're going to get the power shut off. You call the media. They run for the hills. They don't want. They don't want the negative publicity. Yeah, I've got it listed there. These are the these are the most effective signs right here. These are all over the country. So we we've, we've seen Corex walk right up to a BC Hydro room, and if they see those signs, they take out their device. It looks a little bit like this, and it's got a bunch of numbers and a screen on it. It's actually a camera, and they'll take a picture of that with your name and address on it. They email it instantly to BC Hydro, and BC Hydro gets a, they get a message back that says, do not install. This is what some people have done. They get very creative. The lower right hand one there is a freezer basket. Uh, people put locks on them, like the center one at the bottom. And uh, then this, the one up there on the top, it's just a, you know, it was a, I think it was a cage that went around a fan, a window fan. It's, I mean, we've had people who called us and said, Quarks is coming, Quarks is coming. It's like Paul Revere. And they would take, they, uh, they, take, they empty their freezer. A lady in uh, uh, Fleetwood, she emptied her freezer with all the freezer baskets. That's like that low, the one on the right-hand side there. And she, she went around and gave them to all her neighbors. Before, and they were the only ones that didn't get the meters. So here's what's going to happen with uh, my closing arguments here is 400 meter readers are going to lose their jobs. A lot of them are students and they're paying for their university education by reading meters. And as I mentioned before, who knows where the data collecting jobs are going to end up. They outsource 900 call center jobs to Paris. And then with security, Pentagon, CIA, Microsoft, Sony, NATO, Visa, the Vatican, Metro Police, and there's, there's a, a list that I could fill that page with people whose systems have been hacked. And two German students hacked into the smart meter over there, and they could tell, I mean, it's amazing they could tell this, they could tell not only your hyperconsumption, they could tell what brand of TV you were watching, they could tell if you're watching a DVD, listening to a CD, whether the CD or DVD was pirated or copyrighted. Wow. And that is it's very simple because it's all, digital information and every single appliance that has digital information has a signature to it. It's called an electronic signature. I got everybody talking. So there you are. Uh, if you go on, does everybody know the TED Talks program? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing what's on there. Well, this fellow, A.V. Rubin, is a security expert, cybersecurity, and he talked about all the devices that can be hacked and it was unbelievable when he got into the stories about defibrillators, pacemakers, insulin pumps, and then he got into the cars. 
and they started, they figured out that they could actually control a car remotely by hacking into another car that's the same make. So they had two Toyotas, they could disengage the, uh, the brakes, accelerate the car, change the speedo reading, so they actually did it and they were able to <coughs> show a speedometer showing 140 kilometers and it was parked. It's really a, it's really a very, he's a very sharp guy. In that SC magazine, I don't know what SC stands for, but it's, uh, I think it's a science magazine, the two German students got in and they rewrote the hydro bill. Just had to go backwards. And then the, uh, obviously the security pros are, you know, questioning the deployment of the smart meters and what that's going to allow. Here's some of the things that you can do as a group or support us in doing it. The human rights application, the uh, tort of nuisance lawsuit, that is more of a, like a cease and desist, put the brakes on before this goes any further. And obviously we're uh, uh, accepting contributions, we are. And, uh, you know, many people have gone before mayors and it's, you know, it's individuals that have got 34 municipalities now voting in favor of a moratorium. So this is a, a great group of people over on Vancouver Island, stopsmartmeters.ca, uh, Walt McGinnis, Chris Anderson, Christina Gustav, there's a lot of people over there supporting that. And there we are at the Union of BC Municipalities, uh, standing in front of the uh, Pan Pacific Hotel, talking to them. A lot of those people have already moved away because they couldn't get Wi-Fi out of the schools. And in Richmond, they put the, that was one of the first places they, put, they really saturated the area with smart meters. And I mean, shame on them in the sense that they go to the communities where people don't speak English, you know, and they, they just go in there and they run down the street installing the meters, and you get a little tiny blip on your height. If the guys are fast, they can install the meter, and it's less than 30, your power's off less than 10 seconds. It doesn't take long to put it in. Here's one of my favorite starting statements from Martin Luther King. Our days begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. And this matters. This matters in a very big way because none of us know what's going to happen eventually. This is a very, very, very serious issue. And not only from a health perspective, but the safety perspective, the lack of democracy is a total violation of our human rights. And we are totally being ignored. And there's uh, uh, that top one is my website. The bottom one is safety, is Citizen for Safe Technology. That is the number one site in the world for information. Linda has spent over two years now gathering the information. We get it constantly, day by day. She edits it, puts it up, and then has to delete some because it's getting very busy. So there's over 900 articles on there on wireless devices of all kinds. So that's cell phone, cell towers, uh, Wi-Fi in schools, WiMAX, but most uh, importantly is the smart meter. So that we're done. So I, I think. Thank you. Take all the money. Take all the gold. Put it in a big long tube and feed it to a CEO. Take all the oil, rainforest too, feed it to them slowly, till the bitch turns blue. We pay that man a bloody fortune, telling us that it's hard work, it's gotta be extortion. Who's in charge, does anybody know? Could it be the president? Could it be a CEO? Maybe it's some boardroom Need the corporate logo Some faceless suits behind tinted glass Whose names we'll never know Fools were making money Selling ammunition and guns Something to do with ideology and they answered us with 911. Nothing wrong with wishing, some things you can't control. Stay out of your neighbor's yard if you can't make it on your own. Want your glory, boy? You 
go protect his interests. It's just political, corporate, military incest. Who's in charge? Does anybody know? Could it be the president? Could it be a CEO? Maybe it's some boardroom Need the corporate logo Some faceless suits behind tinted glass Whose names we'll never know Took our money Gave it to the rich Said it'd trickle on back down But I guess they're keeping it Shipped our jobs to communist China Sent us the bill They're making plastic discs And they're building huge steel mills The political corporate alliance Let America drive 120 million for a CEO Might as well just kiss her all goodbye They'll use your flag I'll use your religion Gonna keep the ignorant boy To serve their own damn self-interest